boys and girls. My name is Miss Kathy and I'm coming at you from Shaler North Hills Library. Actually, I'm at home as you can see. At, we are doing our programming virtually and coming at you so that we can all enjoy this time of safety together. And you have tuned in to the Magic Treehouse program we are going to be running all this fall. And I'm so excited that you did because I love the Magic Treehouse series. I read these with my kids when they were growing up and even when they got to be teenagers, they would read the latest one when it came out because by the time you're a teenager, it doesn't take very long to read them. And they thought they were pretty awesome. So I hope you think they are awesome too. Whether you have read them already or not, you can tune in every week and we will read reread them if you've read them before or read them for the first time and we'll do crafts and other games and activities along with them that you can access through a separate link. So we are going to start with the first one but we're not necessarily going to go in order every time. We're going to hop around. We will go straight through numerically but we're not going to do every single one. So we're going to start with the first one, Dinosaurs Before Dark. You can either just sit back and relax and listen while we read this, or if you have your own copy of the book, you'll be able to see when I turn a page, and you'll know that that's your cue to turn the page if you want to do it like that. And I'll try to show you pictures when we have pictures to look at. So I'm going to fix Piggy over here because she fell down, and then we are going to get started. They are written by Mary Pope Osborne and illustrated by Sal Murdaka. So I will show you those ones too as we go. Chapter number one, Into the Woods. And before we get started here, I'll show you the very first picture. Okay. Help! A monster! said Annie. Yeah, sure, said Jack. A real monster in Frog Creek, Pennsylvania. Run, Jack! said Annie. She ran up the road. Oh, brother, this is what he got for spending time with his seven-year-old sister. Annie loved pretend stuff, but Jack was eight and a half. He liked real things. Watch out, Jack! The monster's coming! Race you! No thanks, said Jack. Annie raced alone into the woods. Jack looked at the sky. The sun was about to set. Come on, Annie, it's time to go home. But Annie had disappeared. Jack waited. No Annie. Annie, he shouted again. Jack, Jack, come here. Jack groaned. Oh, this better be good, he said. Jack left the road and headed into the woods. The trees were lit with a golden late afternoon light. Come here, called Annie. There she was, standing under a tall oak tree. Look, she said. She was pointing at a rope ladder. The longest rope ladder Jack had ever seen. Wow, he whispered. The ladder went all the way up to the top of the tree. There. At the top was a tree house. It was tucked between two branches. That must be the highest tree house in the world, said Annie. Who built it, asked Jack. I've never seen it before. I don't know, but I'm going up, said Annie. No, we don't know who it belongs to, said Jack. Just for a teeny minute, said Annie. She started up the ladder. Annie, come back. She kept climbing. Another picture. Jack sighed. Annie, it's almost dark. We have to go home. Annie disappeared inside the treehouse. Annie! Jack waited a moment. He was about to call again when Annie poked her head out of the treehouse window. Books! she shouted. What? It's filled with books! Oh man. Jack loved books. He pushed his glasses into place. He gripped the sides of the rope ladder and up he went. 
Chapter 2, The Monster. Jack crawled through a hole in the treehouse floor. Wow! The treehouse was filled with books. Books everywhere! Very old books with dusty covers. New books with shiny, bright covers. Look! You can see far, far away, said Annie. She was peering out the treehouse window. Jack looked out the window with her. Down below were the tops of the other trees. In the distance, he saw the Frog Creek Library, the elementary school, the park. Annie pointed in the other direction. There's our house, she said. Sure enough, there was their white wooden house with the green porch. Next door was their neighbor's black dog, Henry. He looked very tiny. Hi, Henry, shouted Annie. Shush, said Jack. We're not supposed to be up here. He glanced around the treehouse again. I wonder who owns all of these books, said he. He noticed bookmarks were sticking out of many of them. I like this one, said Annie. She held up a book with a castle on the cover. Here's a book about Pennsylvania, said Jack. He turned to the page with the bookmark. Hey, there's a picture of Frog Creek in here, said Jack. It's a picture of these woods. Oh, here's a book for you, said Annie. She held up a book about dinosaurs. A blue silk bookmark was sticking out of it. Let me see it. Jack set down his backpack and grabbed the book from her. You look at this one and I'll look at one about castles, said Annie. No, we better not, said Jack. We don't know who these books belong to. But even as he said this, Jack opened the dinosaur book to where the bookmark was. He couldn't help himself. He turned to a picture of an ancient flying reptile, a pterodon. He touched the huge bat-like wings. Wow, whispered Jack. I wish I could see a pterodon for real. Jack studied the picture of the odd-looking creature soaring through the sky. Ah, screamed Annie. What, said Jack. A monster, Annie cried. She pointed to the treehouse window. Stop pretending, Annie, said Jack. No, really, said Annie. Jack looked out the window. A giant creature was gliding above the treetops. He had a long, weird crest on the back of his head, a skinny beak, and huge bat-like wings. It was a real, live pterodon. The creature curved through the sky. He was coming straight toward the treehouse. He looked like a glider plane. The wind began to blow. The leaves trembled. Suddenly, the creature soared up high into the sky. Jack nearly fell out the window trying to see it. The wind picked up. It was whistling now. The treehouse started to spin. What's happening, cried Jack. Get down, shouted Annie. She pulled him back from the window. The treehouse was spinning faster and faster. Jack squeezed his eyes shut. He held on to Annie. Then everything went still absolutely still. Jack opened his eyes. Sunlight slanted through the window. There was Annie, the books, his backpack. The tree house was still up in an oak tree, but it wasn't the same oak tree. Chapter three, where is here? Jack looked out the window. He looked down at the picture in the book. He looked back out the window. The world outside and the world in the picture, they were exactly the same. The pterodon was soaring through the sky. The ground was covered with ferns and tall grass. There was a winding stream, a sloping hill, and volcanoes in the distance. Well, where are we? stammered Jack. The pterodon glided down to the base of their tree. The creature coasted to a stop and stood very still. What happened to us, said Annie. She looked at Jack. He looked at her. 
I don't know, said Jack. I was looking at the picture in the book, and you said, Wow, I wish I could see a pterodon for real, said Annie. Yeah, and then we saw one in the Frog Creek Woods, said Jack. Yeah, and then the wind got loud, and the treehouse started spinning, said Annie. And we landed here, said Jack. And we landed here, said Annie. So that means, said Jack. So that means what, said Annie. Nothing, said Jack. He shook his head. None of this can be real. Annie looked out the window again. But he's real, she said. He's very real. Jack looked out the window with her. The pterodon was standing at the base of the oak tree like a guard. His giant wings were spread out on either side of him. Hi, Annie shouted. Shush, said Jack. We're not supposed to be here. But where is here, said Annie. I don't know, said Jack. Hi, Annie called again to the creature. The pterodon looked up at them. Where is here, Annie called down. You're nuts. He can't talk, said Jack. But maybe the book can tell us. Jack looked down at the book. He read the words under the picture. This flying reptile lived in the Cretaceous period. It vanished 65 million years ago. No, impossible. They couldn't have landed in a time 65 million years ago. Jack, said Annie, he's nice. Nice? Yeah, I can tell. Let's go down and talk to him. Talk to him? Annie started down the rope ladder. Hey, shouted Jack, but Annie kept going. Are you crazy? Jack called. Annie dropped to the ground. She stepped boldly up to the ancient creature. Chapter four, Henry. Jack gasped as Annie held out her hand. Oh, brother, she was always trying to make friends with animals, but this was going too far. Don't get too close to him, Annie, Jack shouted. But Annie touched the pterodon's crest. She stroked his neck. She was talking to him. What in the world was she saying? Jack took a deep breath. Okay, he would go down too. It would be good to examine the creature, take notes like a scientist. Jack started down the rope ladder. When he got to the ground, Jack was only a few feet away from the creature. The creature stared at Jack. His eyes were bright and alert. He's soft, Jack, said Annie. He feels like Henry. Jack snorted. He's no dog, Annie. Feel him, Jack, said Annie. Jack didn't move. Don't think, Jack. Just do it. Jack stepped forward. He put out his arm very cautiously. He brushed his hand down the creature's neck. Interesting. A thin layer of fuzz covered the pterodon's skin. Soft, huh? said Annie. Jack reached into his backpack and pulled out a pencil and a notebook. He wrote, fuzzy skin. What are you doing? asked Annie. Taking notes, said Jack. We're probably the first people in the whole world to ever see a real live pterodon. Jack looked at the pterodon again. The creature had a bony crest on top of his head. The crest was longer than Jack's arm. I wonder how smart he is, Jack said. Very smart, said Annie. Don't count on it, said Jack. His brain's probably no bigger than a bean. No, he's very smart. I can feel it, said Annie. I'm going to call him Henry. Jack wrote in his notebook, small brain. Jack looked at the creature again. Maybe he's a mutant, he said. The creature tilted his head. Annie laughed. He's no mutant, Jack. Well, what's he doing here then? Where is this place, said Jack. Annie leaned close to the pterodon. Do you know where we are, Henry? She asked softly. The creature fixed his eyes on Annie. His long jaws were opening and closing like a giant pair of scissors. Are you trying to talk to me, Henry? 
asked Annie. Forget it, Annie, Jack wrote in his notebook. Mouth like scissors? Did we come to a long time ago, Henry? Asked Annie. Is this a place from long ago? Suddenly she gasped. <gasps> Jack! He looked up. Annie was pointing toward the hill. On top stood a huge dinosaur. Chapter five, gold in the grass. Go, go, said Jack. He threw his notebook into his pack. He pushed Annie toward the rope ladder. Bye, Henry, she said. Go, said Jack. He gave Annie another big push. Quit it, she said, but she started up the ladder. Jack scrambled after her. They tumbled into the treehouse. They were panting as they looked out the window at the dinosaur. He was standing on the hilltop eating flowers off a tree. Oh, man, whispered Jack, we are in a time long ago. The dinosaur looked like a huge rhinoceros, only he had three horns instead of one, two long ones above his eyes and one on his nose. Triceratops, said Jack. Does he eat people, whispered Annie. I'll look it up. Jack grabbed the dinosaur book. He flipped through the pages. There, he said. He pointed to a picture of the Triceratops. He read the caption. The Triceratops lived in the late Crustaceous period. This plant-eating dinosaur weighed over 12,000 pounds. Jack slammed the book shut. Just plants, no meat. Let's go see him, said Annie. Are you nuts, said Jack. Don't you want to take notes about him, asked Annie. We're probably the first people in the whole world to ever see a real live Triceratops. Jack sighed. She was right. Let's go, he said. He shoved the dinosaur book into his pack. He slung it over his shoulder and started down the ladder. On the way down, Jack stopped. He called up to Annie. Just promise you won't pet him. I promise. Promise you won't kiss him. I promise. Promise you won't talk to him. I promise. Promise you won't go. Go, she said. Jack went. Annie followed. When they stepped off the ladder, the pterodon gave them a kind look. Annie blew a kiss at him. Be back soon, Henry, she said cheerfully. Shush, said Jack, and he led the way through the ferns, slowly and carefully. When he reached the bottom of the hill, he kneeled behind a fat bush. Annie knelt beside him and started to speak. Shh! Jack put his fingers to his lips. Annie made a face. Jack peeked out at the Triceratops. The dinosaur was incredibly big. Bigger than a truck. He was eating the flowers off a magnolia tree. Jack slipped his notebook out of his pack. He wrote, eats flowers. Annie nudged him. Jack ignored her. He studied the triceratops again. He wrote, eats slowly. Annie nudged him hard. Jack looked at her. Annie pointed to herself. She walked her fingers through the air. She pointed to the dinosaur. She smiled. Was she teasing? She waved at Jack. Jack started to grab her. She laughed and jumped away. She fell into the grass in full view of the Triceratops. Get back, whispered Jack. Too late. The big dinosaur had spotted Annie. He gazed down at her from the hilltop. Half of a magnolia flower was sticking out of his mouth. Oops, said Annie. Get back, Jack shouted at her. He looks nice, Jack. Nice, watch out for his horns, Annie. No, he's nice, Jack. Nice, but the Triceratops just gazed calmly down at Annie. Then he turned and loped away down the side of the hill. Bye, said Annie. She turned back to Jack. See? Jack grunted, but he wrote in his notebook. Nice. Come on, let's look around some more, said Annie. 
As Jack started after Annie, he saw something glittering in the tall grass. He reached out and picked it up. A medallion, a gold medallion. A letter was engraved on the medallion, a fancy M. Oh man, someone came here before us, Jack said softly. Chapter six, Dinosaur Valley. Annie, look at this, Jack called. Look what I found. Annie had gone up to the hilltop. She was busy picking a flower from the magnolia tree. Annie, look, a medallion. But Annie wasn't paying attention to Jack. She was staring at something on the other side of the hill. Oh, wow, she said. Annie! Clutching her magnolia flower, she took off down the hill. Annie, come back, Jack shouted. But Annie had disappeared. I'm going to kill her, Jack muttered. He stuffed the gold medallion into his jeans pocket. Then he heard Annie shriek, Annie! Jack heard another sound as well, a deep bellowing sound, like a tuba. Jack, come here, Annie called. Annie! Jack grabbed his backpack and raced up the hill. When he got to the top, he gasped. The valley below was filled with nests, big nests made out of mud, and the nests were filled with tiny dinosaurs. Annie was crouching next to one of the nests, and standing over her was a gigantic duck-billed dinosaur. Don't panic. Don't move, said Jack. He stepped slowly down the hill toward Annie. The huge dinosaur was towering above Annie, waving her arms, making her tuba sound. Jack stopped. He didn't want to get too close. He knelt on the ground. Okay, move toward me slowly, he said. Annie started to stand up. Don't stand. Crawl, said Jack. Clutching her flower, Annie crawled toward Jack. The duck-billed dinosaur followed her, still bellowing. Annie froze. Keep going, Jack said softly. Annie started crawling again. Jack inched farther down the hill until he was just an arm's distance from Annie. He reached out and grabbed her hand. He pulled Annie toward him. Stay down, he said. He crouched next to her. Bow your head. Pretend to chew. Chew? Yes. I read that's what you do if a mean dog comes at you. She's no dog, Jack, said Annie. Just chew, said Jack. Jack and Annie both bowed their heads and pretended to chew. Soon the dinosaur grew quiet. Jack raised his head. I don't think she's mad anymore, he said. Thanks, Jack, for saving me, said Annie. You have to use your brain, said Jack. You can't just go running into a nest of babies. There's always a mother nearby. Annie stood up. Annie! Too late. Annie held out her magnolia flower to the dinosaur. I'm sorry I made you worry about your babies, she said. The dinosaur moved closer to Annie. She grabbed the flower from her. She reached for another. No more, said Annie. The dinosaur let out a sad tuba sound. But there are more flowers up there, Annie said. She pointed to the top of the hill. I'll get you some. Annie hurried up the hill. The dinosaur waddled after her. Jack quickly examined the babies. Some were crawling out of their nests. Where were the other mothers? Jack took out the dinosaur book. He flipped through the pages. He found a picture of some duck-billed dinosaurs. He read the caption. <clears throat> the Antosauruses lived in colonies. While a few mothers babysat the nests, others hunted for food. So there must be more mothers close by. Hey, Jack, Annie called. Jack looked up. Annie was at the top of the hill, feeding magnolia flowers to the giant Antosaurus. 
She's nice too, Jack, Annie said. But suddenly the Anthosaurus made her terrible tuba sound. Annie crouched down and started to chew. The dinosaur barged down the hill. She seemed afraid of something. Jack put the book down on top of his pack. He hurried up to Annie. Why she ran away, said Annie. We were starting to be friends. Jack looked around. What he saw in the distance almost made him throw up. An enormous, ugly monster was coming across the plain. He was walking on two big legs and swinging a long, thick tail and dangling two tiny arms. He had a huge head, and his jaws were wide open. Even from far away, Jack could see his long, gleaming teeth. Tyrannosaurus Rex, whispered Jack. Chapter seven, ready, set, go. Run, Annie, run, cried Jack, to the tree house. They dashed down the hill together, through the tall grass, through the ferns, past the pterodon, and right to the rope ladder. They scrambled up. Seconds later, they tumbled into the tree house. Annie leaped to the window. He's going away, she said, panting. Jack pushed his glasses into place. He looked through the window with her. The Tyrannosaurus was wandering off, but then... The monster stopped and turned around. Duck, said Jack. The two of them hunched down. After a long moment, they raised their heads. They peeked out again. Coast clear, said Jack. Yay, whispered Annie. We have to get out of here, said Jack. You made a wish before, said Annie. I wish we could go back to Frog Creek, said Jack. Nothing happened. I wish, wait, you were looking at a picture in the dinosaur book, remember? The dinosaur book. Jack groaned. Oh no, I left the book and my pack on the hill. I have to go back. Oh, forget it, said Annie. I can't, said Jack. The book doesn't belong to us. Plus my notebook's in my pack with all my notes. Hurry, said Annie. Jack hurried down the rope ladder. He leaped to the ground. He raced past the pterodon, through the ferns, through the tall grass, and up the hill. He looked down. There was his pack lying on the ground. On top of it was the dinosaur book. But now the valley below was filled with anatosauruses, all standing guard around the nests. Where had they been? Did fear of the Tyrannosaurus send them home? Jack took a deep breath. Ready, set, go. He charged down the hill. He leaped to his backpack. He scooped it up. He grabbed the dinosaur book. A terrible tuba sound. Another, another. All the anatosauruses were bellowing at him. Jack took off. He raced up the hilltop. He started down the hill. He stopped. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was back, and he was standing between Jack and the treehouse. Chapter 8, A Giant Shadow. Jack jumped behind the magnolia tree. His heart was beating so fast he could hardly think. He peeked out at the giant monster. The horrible-looking creature was opening and closing his huge jaws. His teeth were as big as steak knives. Don't panic. Think. Jack peered down at the valley. Good. The duck-billed dinosaurs were sticking close to their nest. Jack looked back at Tyrannosaurus. Good. The monster still didn't seem to know he was there. Don't panic. Think. Think. Maybe there's information in the book. Jack opened the dinosaur book. He found Tyrannosaurus Rex. He read, Tyrannosaurus Rex was the largest meat-eating land animal of all time. 
If it were alive today, it would eat a human in one bite. Great. The book was no help at all. Okay, he couldn't hide on the other side of the hill. The Anatarasauruses might stampede. Okay, he couldn't run to the treehouse. The Tyrannosaurus might run faster. Okay, maybe he should just wait. Wait for the monster to leave. Jack peeked around the tree. The Tyrannosaurus had wandered closer to the hill. Something caught Jack's eye. Annie was coming down the rope ladder. Was she nuts? What was she doing? Jack watched Annie hop off the ladder. She went straight to the pterodon. She was talking to him. She was flapping her arms. She pointed at Jack, at the sky, at the treehouse. She was nuts. Go, go back to the tree, Jack whispered. Go. Suddenly, Jack heard a roar. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was looking in his direction. Roar! Jack hit the ground. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was coming toward the hill. Jack felt the ground shaking. Should he run, crawl back into Dinosaur Valley, climb the magnolia tree? Just then, a giant shadow covered Jack. He looked up. The pterodon was gliding overhead. The giant creature sailed down toward the top of the hill. He was coming straight for Jack. Chapter 9, The Amazing Ride The pterodon coasted down to the ground. He stared at Jack with his bright, alert eyes. What was Jack supposed to do? Climb on? But I'm too heavy, thought Jack. Don't think, just do it. Jack looked at the Tyrannosaurus. He was starting up the hill. His giant teeth were flashing in the sunlight. Okay, don't think, just do it. Jack put his book in his pack. Then he eased down onto the pterodon's back. He held on tightly. The creature moved forward. He spread out his wings and lifted off the ground. They teetered this way, then that. Jack nearly fell off. The pterodon steadied himself, then rose into the sky. Jack looked down. The Tyrannosaurus was chomping the air and staring up at him. The pterodon glided away. He sailed over the hilltop. He circled over the valley, over all the nests filled with babies, over all the giant duck-billed dinosaurs. Then the pterodon soared out over the plain, over the triceratops who was grazing in the high grass. It was amazing. It was a miracle. Jack felt like a bird, as light as a feather. The wind was rushing through his hair. The air smelled sweet and fresh. He whooped. He laughed. Jack couldn't believe it. He was riding on the back of an ancient flying reptile. The pterodon sailed over the stream, over the ferns and bushes. Then he carried Jack down to the base of the oak tree. When they came to a stop, Jack slid off the creature's back and landed on the ground. Then the pterodon took off again and glided into the sky. Bye, Henry, whispered Jack. Are you okay? Annie shouted from the treehouse. Jack pushed his glasses into place. He kept staring up at the pterodon. Jack, are you okay? Annie called. Jack looked up at Annie. He smiled. Thanks for saving my life, he said. That was really fun. Climb up, said Annie. Jack tried to stand. His legs were wobbly. He felt a bit dizzy. Hurry, shouted Annie. He's coming. Jack looked around. The Tyrannosaurus was heading straight toward him. Jack bolted to the ladder. He grabbed the sides and started up. Hurry, hurry, screamed Annie. Jack scrambled into the treehouse. He's coming toward the tree, Annie cried. Suddenly, something slammed against the oak tree. The treehouse shook like a leaf. Jack and Annie tumbled into the books. Make a wish, cried Annie. 
We need the book, the one with the picture of Frog Creek, said Jack. Where is it? He pushed some books aside. He had to find that book about Pennsylvania. There it was. He grabbed it and tore through it, looking for the photograph of the Frog Creek Woods. He found it. Jack pointed to the picture. I wish we could go home, he shouted. The wind began to moan, softly at first. Hurry, Jack yelled. The wind picked up. It was whistling now. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Jack closed his eyes. He held on tightly to Annie. Then everything was still. Absolutely still. Chapter 10, Home Before Dark. A bird began to sing. Jack opened his eyes. He was still pointing at the picture of the Frog Creek Woods. He peeked out the treehouse window. Outside, he saw the exact same view. We're home, whispered Annie. The woods were lit with a golden late afternoon light. The sun was about to set. No time had passed since they left. Jack! Annie! A voice called from the distance. That's Mom, said Annie, pointing. Jack saw their mother far away. She was standing in front of their house. She looked very tiny. Annie! Jack! She called. Annie stuck her head out of the window and shouted, Coming! Jack still felt dazed. He just stared at Annie. What happened to us, he said. We took a trip in a magic tree house, Annie said simply. But it's the same time as when we left, said Jack. Annie shrugged. And how did it take us so far away, said Jack, and so long ago? You just looked at a book and said you wished we could go there, said Annie and the magic tree house took us there. But how, said Jack, and who built this magic tree house? Who put all these books here? A magic person, I guess, said Annie. A magic person? Oh, look, said Jack, I almost forgot about this. He reached into his pocket and pulled out the gold medallion. Someone lost this back there in dinosaur land. Look, there's a letter M on it. Annie's eyes got round. You think M stands for magic person? She said. I don't know, said Jack. I just know someone went to that place before us. Jack! Annie! Came the distant cry again. Annie poked her head out the window. Coming! She shouted. Jack put the gold medallion back in his pocket. He pulled the dinosaur book out of his pack and put it with all the other books. Then he and Annie took one last look around the tree house. Goodbye, house, whispered Annie. Jack slung his backpack over his shoulder. shoulder. He pointed to the ladder. Annie started down. Jack followed. Seconds later, they hopped onto the ground and started walking out of the woods. No one's going to believe our story, said Jack. So let's not tell anyone, said Annie. Dad won't believe it, said Jack. He'll say it was a dream, said Annie. Mom won't believe it, said Jack. She'll say it was pretend. My teacher won't believe it, said Jack. She'll say you're nuts, said Annie. We better not tell anyone, said Jack. I already said that, said Annie. Jack sighed. I think I'm starting to not believe it myself, he said. They left the woods and started up the road toward their house. As they walked past all the houses on their street, the trip to dinosaur time did seem more and more like a dream. Only this world and this time seemed real. Jack reached into his pocket. He clasped the gold medallion. He felt the engraving of the letter M. It made Jack's fingers tingle. Jack laughed. <laughs> Suddenly, he felt very happy. He couldn't explain what had happened today, but he knew for sure that their trip in the magic tree house had been real, absolutely real. Tomorrow, Jack said softly, we'll go back to the woods. Of course, said Annie. And we'll climb up to the tree house, said Jack. Of course, said Annie.
and we'll see what happens next, said Jack. Of course, said Annie. Race you! And they took off together, running for home. The end. Thanks for reading Dinosaurs Dark with me. Now, click on the other link provided and we'll do some other fun activities together. See you soon. Bye. Hi, thanks for joining us for Magic Treehouse Dinosaurs Before Dark. Now, this activity shows us how big dinosaurs really were. So if you either picked up your packet at the library or printed it out, hopefully you have a big stack of papers like this. And before we get to that, this chart here shows us various different types of dinosaurs and how big their footprints were compared to a man. Man is this little blue guy there. He comes up two squares. And you can see the footprint we're gonna build today is the Triceratops. And that takes up about one full square. So let's see what that means in full size here on the floor. If you have your packet of papers, you're gonna take the one on top that has the red number one on it. And you're gonna lay that down on the floor. Make sure you have a little bit of room because this guy was big. And then your next paper has a black number one at the top and a red number two at the bottom. So we're gonna take that black number one and we're gonna cover up the red number one on this other sheet. And that also covers up that gray strip. So we're gonna go straight down in a column here. Now our next sheet has a black number two and a red number three. So we're gonna cover up this red number two with our black one. And then we have a red three at the bottom that we're gonna cover up with this black three. And that is the bottom of the first row. It is four sheets going down. Now we're gonna start at the top of the next row. So we're gonna put this one next to that one where it has the letter A and line that up. There's no A on the first sheet, but the A goes right in the middle there. And then we take our black number four and cover up the red four. We're starting down this second column. And our black five on our red five, and we have all the A's are lined up in this, on the left-hand side of the paper. And the last one in this row is the number six. Okay, we have two out of the three rows done. This sheet here doesn't look like it has very much of the footprint on it at all. It doesn't really print. It would be really far at the edge, the line there going down, but we're gonna stick that up top there anyways. And that's got the red number seven at the top. We're gonna cover that up with our black number seven. So you can see how that black line would kind of just come straight down there and our black number eight, and lastly, our black number nine. And there you can see we have a 12 square grid, and that is how big Mr. Triceratops' footprint would have been. Here's that little diagram we started with. That's how big a man is. And one footprint is about half as tall as a man. So you can stand on this and see how big his foot was compared to your foot. Pretty big. I don't think I would like to meet up with one of these guys, do you? Especially with those horns. And that's the type that Jack and Annie ran into in Dinosaurs Before Dark, huh? So stay tuned for more fun crafts with dinosaurs before dark. This has been Mrs. Coltis. Bye. Hi, and welcome to the dinosaurs before dark craft activity. This is Mrs. Coltis and we are making egg carton dinosaurs. Hopefully you downloaded it from the computer link or you picked up a packet from the library that shows you what you need I did some of it ahead of time because it takes a little while and you don't want to sit there and watch me do nothing for a long time. So 
I'm gonna show you what I did so far, and you can go do these steps and pause the computer if you want, and then come back and pick up a little bit later on. First, I took an egg carton and I cut off a section of it. Now in their picture, it looks like they're only using one or maybe two sections of the egg carton. I decided to be really wild and use three sections of an egg carton because you can make your dinosaur look like whatever you want. And then I used some paint and I painted the dinosaur and I made it kind of pretty colors, I think, of purple and pink. Now, were the dinosaurs really purple and pink? Probably not, but hey, we never saw a living dinosaur, so who knows? You can make your dinosaur, like I said, however you want. So I painted that, and that's the part that takes a while because after you paint it, you have to let it dry. So if you haven't done those steps yet, if you haven't started at all, go cut up your egg carton and paint it whatever colors you want, any paint you have on hand, leave it sit for a while to dry, and then you can come up back and pick up with this part. So after your egg carton is dry, I took a pipe cleaner and actually before I did that, we'll do the hole punch part. So I put a hole punch on the one end of the egg carton, I don't know if you can see it there or not, and on the other end, Zoop. right there. And that is what is going to hold your pipe cleaner spikes on the back. So then you get your pipe cleaner, and again, it can be any color you want. And I made some spikes on it. I started out by putting one end of the pipe cleaner into that hole we just made. And you can bend it underneath a little bit so that it stays. And then I bent some spikes into it the way I wanted it to work. And I stuck the other end of the pipe cleaner into that other hole that we made. And I'm wiggling it down around there like that. And then I have my Elmer's glue sitting here. And I'm going to put some glue on to help hold that into place. Now, of course, anytime you use Elmer's glue, you're gonna have to leave it sit and dry for a little bit too, just like with the paint. If you have mom or dad around and they want to use hot glue with it, you could use hot glue and hot glue is something that pretty much dries right away. But you need an adult to help you with that because the little squirter that the glue comes out of gets really, really hot. So you wanna make sure you have an adult around and ask their permission to, to use that on your dinosaur and then for them to help you with it. But I did use my good old Elmer's glue here and glue down my spikes. And next, I'm gonna glue on some eyes. So I'm gonna make this the front end. And I got out some googly eyes. If you don't have Google eyes, you can just cut out eyes, draw them on a sheet of paper and cut them out. You can make them look like however you want. You can have eyelashes on your eyes if you want. Or you can make them so that they're going different directions, like they're cross-eyed, whatever you want to draw. That's the fun of crafts. You can do whatever you want with them. I'm putting my eyes on here with some glue. And then I also cut out a little mouth. Now, Dinosaur probably had a whole lot more teeth in his mouth, but I'm just making a basic red mouth. And I'm going to put that on there. Actually, I even made it smiling because I thought if I was a purple and pink dinosaur, I would want to be smiling. So this is probably very unlike any of the dinosaurs Jack and Annie saw, but that's not what we're caring about right now. And there we have my smiling pink and purple dinosaur. And I would love to see pictures of your dinosaurs if you want to take a picture of them and send them to Shaler Library's 
Facebook page or to our website. Somehow, however is easiest for you to get them to us, I would love to see how you guys make your dinosaurs. Okay, so hopefully that craft worked for you and there's a whole rest of an egg carton there. You can make as many dinosaurs as you want and then you can play with them. You can make different kinds too. It doesn't have to be a stegosaurus type like this, which I guess is what we would be doing with those spikes. You can make some other kinds, be creative. We have another activity for a magic tree house. So if you haven't tried all the links yet, make sure you try them all before we go on to next week's program. Thanks for tuning in. Hi, Miss Kathy back from Shaler North Hills Library. And we are continuing our magic tree house dinosaurs before dark program and now we have a mystery dinosaur who am i sheet and i thought we could fill that out together because it doesn't give you the answer so you might not know who they are and i had to look them up because i'm not a dinosaur expert number one i have huge bat like wings fuzzy skin a mouth like scissors here i'm going to get my scissors a mouth like scissors and a bony crest on top of my head. Who am I? Okay, so I think you guys have any thoughts on what the answer is? I actually had to look it up on the internet and I found that there is one dinosaur that's fairly newly discovered called Yi. G Y I G I, two separate words. I think it was find in, found in China, if I remember correctly, and it matches this description pretty good. But that one's being so recent, that one wasn't around at the time when Dinosaurs Before Dark was written. So, in thinking the answer they want for this one is another dinosaur with the wings, like the one that they flew on, which is a pterodon. P-T-E-R-A-N-O-D-A-N, Pteranodon. But if you haven't ever heard of the Yi G, and again, I'm not sure I'm even saying that right, look it up on your computer and you can find out more about that dinosaur, which also had big wings. Okay, number two, I have two long horns above my eyes and one on my nose. Because I weigh over 12,000 pounds, some people think I look like a huge rhinoceros with a shield behind its head. Who am I? And of course that is, you guys get it? Triceratops, right? We have three horns on the head two above the eyes and one on the nose. Anytime you hear three horns, you think of triceratops because tri is a part of the language that usually means three. Like how many sides are on a triangle? Three. How many wheels are on a tricycle? Three. So anytime you hear tri, it usually means three. So let's look at question number try, I guess, because it's question number three. I have a duck bill and a, I make a deep bellowing sound like a tuba. My kind lives in colonies so that some of us can hunt for food while others babysit the nests. Who am I? And Jack and Annie saw some of these kinds. They were the, did you figure it out? Anatasaris, the Anatasaris, A-N-A-T-O-S-A-U-R-E-S, -A -A -E Anatasaris, with that duck bill. That means has a bill on it shaped like a duck would have. Question number four, I walk on two big legs, swing a long, thick, Tail. This is my tail swinging behind me. And dangle two tiny arms 
The long, gleaming teeth in my huge head tell you I am the largest meat-eating animal of all time. Who am I? And of course, you know that it is a T-Rex, right? T-Rex, of course. Tyrannosaurus Rex. Okay, number five. I may be small, but my long, thin legs have earned me the name of Speedy Thief. And my clawed hands and feet make me one of the most dangerous meat eaters around. Who am I? So even though he's small, he's very dangerous. Did you get the answer to that one? Velociraptor. Velociraptor. V-E-L-O-C-I-R-A-P-T-O-R. Okay, good job. One left. Number six. I have pebbly skin and a toothless spoon-shaped beak that is perfect for eating plants. The long crest on the top of my head slopes backwards, and I like to travel in a herd. Who am I? Had to look this one up for sure, too. Guys have thoughts? Okay, this one I gotta look at while I'm reading because it's a little bit long to say. Parasaurolophus. Parasaurolophus. You get ready? That's a big long one. P A R A S A U R O L O P H U S. Wow. How would you like to have to write that on a paper every day? Okay, we figured out all those mystery dinosaurs. There's one last activity in your packet. Help Jack get back to the treehouse without running into the T-Rex. So that is a maze that you have to solve. You want to start over here at Jack and somehow get over to the finish and not get eaten by the T-Rex in the middle. So you should have one of those pa papers to print out. And the answer is actually given at the bottom, but try to do it without looking at the answer. Maybe cover that part up or fold it back before you start the maze. Okay. And that is it for Dinosaurs Before Dark. Hopefully you printed out the huge footprint too and saw how big one dinosaur's footprint could be. Not anybody to mess with. So stay tuned next week and we will have Magic Treehouse Adventure number two. Stay tuned, and I will see you then. Thanks for watching. This has been Mrs. Coltis with Shaler Library. Bye.